After playing as pretty much everything imaginable in Victoria 3, I think it's about time we play as the English also and see what this uh, Victoria lady is all about. We do start with uh, Mr. William of Hanover, and by Mr. I mean King, but he's 70 and he's basically gonna die as soon as we start the campaign, so uh, let's hit it up, shall we, my boys? We got the Hanoverian succession here. Once King uh, William dies, we're gonna lose our current personal union over Hanover, and and we also start with minus 21,000 pounds. Not to fear, that's easy to fix. The only thing we need to do is set to high taxation. If you're gonna live in my lands, you gotta pay the existing tax, all right? That's that's what's going on. We're also gonna set up some more consumption taxes. We got liquor tax already. We're gonna go for services tax, and that gave us 67,000 pounds directly. So we start with 100,000 on the positive. But we're not stopping there because we're adding luxury clothes tax as well as tea tax this is probably gonna upset the spiffing brit but hey tea has to be paid for nobody can just enjoy a free cup of tea anymore right that's how it is in this world now let's go ahead and see what we're gonna do with our buildings we have a ton of everything from the start because we are the strongest country in the world we actually begin as the world's greatest power but gdp wise we are third after our subject of the east india company and the great Qing, with the russians and the french following right next to us the problem is that the french would actually surpass us really fast if we don't try and cuck them over so the way that it works the french usually colonize africa super fast and from those colonial holdings in Africa, they gained massive amounts of power, massive amounts of population, and GDP. So we want to focus on those lands ourselves. We're going to go to declared interest, declare all of these African areas as our interest, as well as this bit here so we can colonize the northern tip of uh, the Canadian parts. As for technology, we start with the railways, we start with intense agriculture. We are one of the greatest technological supremacies in the Viki 3 universe. And the first thing we're going to go for is going to be nationalism for the extra authority points speaking of authority we're gonna use the extra 200 that we have here to encourage the greener grass campaign in uh, London as well as in the Midlands both of these start off with 2.8 as well as 2.5 million population and generally speaking we want to make sure that our English holdings and our Great British Holdings is where we build the majority of our stuff instead of building this in other parts of the world. One more thing to note is that we have a ton of subjects. All of the Canadian parts is divided into multiple subjects. The same goes for the Australian lands and of course for our Indian Holdings. So what I prefer personally to do is to get rid of the direct vassalage over Canada especially. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna annex Canada one by one. There you go, annexatio, go to military, mobilize, send them over by the border. Most likely what's gonna happen is they're not actually going to fight us and we will be able to uh, directly control these provinces in the North American bit, avoiding future independence movements. You cannot be independent if you don't exist, okay? That's just how it works in this game. Don't forget to set up the best production method that you can set up for all of your starting industry. We do have quite a few problems with market access. Most of these, however, can be easily fixed by simply building a port. Pretty much all of these are fixed by building a port, and we also have some unproductive trade routes so let's cancel that right now we also need more convoys so yet another reason why we should build more ports let's do that right now actually before you build anything else though you got to queue up some more construction sectors we only have nine at the beginning so we're gonna go up to 15 construction sectors in the home countries let's make sure we alt click on all of these i forgot to do that let's uh click on the ports to bring them over to the bottom of the queue this way we do the construction sectors first you can also go around your various goods in the British market and you can set it to encourage exports or encourage domestic supply. This will significantly improve your economy. Just a few clicks here and there. Remember though that this changes and fluctuates a lot so every few years try to go back to the screen and reset it to whichever area it's needed more. Legislation wise we start with quite a lot of great legislations. We have colonial resettlement which is the one that we need because this offers an extra 100 migration attraction in unincorporated states and after we start 
start annexing all of the Canadian and Australian parts, this is all going to be unincorporated states. We will not actually be incorporating it, at least not at the start of the game. We won't. There you go. We just uh, got the opium wars as well. I'm sorry. What? The Americans are actually helping my little colony here. Um, That's not going to cut it. Sorry, America. But we're going to be asking you to ban slavery, mother schnappers. All right. We're going to ban slavery as punishment. No, no. Actually, that would be a reward for them. Let's conquer their states and return. How about that? Montana is pretty cool. I'm going to go for Montana and Wyoming also. Plus, let's also get North Dakota. We can also reform our government for free. So let's see if we can add in the industrialists. We can. How about the armed forces? Nope. Armed forces are going to reduce our legitimacy. So now we got 83% legitimacy, which means we're going to be able to enact legislation a little bit faster. We also want to go for public schools which offers an extra 37 percent assimilation alongside education so let's uh, enact that now i'm also going to be improving relations with uh, prussia i want to get an alliance with the future germans for no other reason except the fact that i'm a massive uh germa boo so uh yeah deal with it all right got a problem with that and we're going to arms against these bad boys here let's quickly uh crush over lower canada so we can focus 100 percent on the uh, american troops i'm actually gonna have to activate conscripts and get some more generals going apparently the americans are going full-blown war against me so um i'm gonna have to deal with them before they get a little bit more bold let's also queue up a lot more coal mines we need a ton of coal and iron to run our industry so let's say an extra 10 coal mines and 10 iron mines for the time being plus some extra food industries always helps since you know people need food in order to survive oh no jack the rippenstein has killed people unacceptable not under my command okay we're gonna hunt this boy down we're gonna make him pay for this we're gonna put a taxation on him <laughs> and we just annexed quebec or lower Ca what was it called quebec i thought it was called lower canada what the snaps all right now let's advance on the uh, american front well 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 if it isn't american and losing the war the annoying part is that there's so many fronts open right now that they can just advance on any of these fronts without me realizing it when i'm not looking and that's li literally what's happening right now actually my little colombian district is doing all the hard work here they're actually advancing on the war target whilst i'm fighting the american army and we just managed to get the war target now i assigned one of my armies to take north dakota so they're going to be capitulating fairly soon and i'm going to be getting a huge chunk of the american lands i'm actually happy that they did this because this way i cuck on over the americans from actually ever getting this side of the americas so it's gonna seriously inhibit their ability to uh, expand as consequence just realized that i should probably attempt to uh claim back my old american colony eventually in this run right almost there my boys 85 88 come on we almost got this almost glutton this and we just got the three provinces we wanted from them absolutely amazing this is gonna prevent them from uh colonizing nitsi pikaki and iron confederacy as well now time to do the same thing i did for lower canada this time for the hudson bay annex subject exactly same situation send our units by the border with them and we're also going to be building an extra 15 construction sectors these we're going to be building in the west countries hunt counties i get confused between these two words sadly <laughs> come on hudson bay just give up actually there's been a patch and I think the patch probably influenced the ability of the AI to fight. Meaning they pro- Oh no, never mind. They they gave up. I was gonna say meaning that they might be more inclined to um, fight wars now than they were before. Let's go with the next target. And I know I have a mission to confederate Australia and uh, Canada. But I'm, I'm not gonna do those missions. Screw that man, okay? This is not about what they want. It's about what we want. And we want direct control. Let's fix our market access issues by building some more railways here. And and let's queue up even more coal and uh, iron mines as long as we have a solid base foundation the rest of the uh, industrial empire follows suit without issue speaking of guys if you don't want to shift click which queues five you can always control click for the double amount of uh, building and we have the coronation of queen victoria she is now the one in charge of the country it also means that we lost the pu that we had over hanover and we're never going to go back to that area because we don't care about germany right now we care about our various puppets around the world don't forget to make sure that you uh, start colonizing the american parts we're gonna be funding a large investigation in the hopes that we're gonna find out who jack the stripper is and bring him to justice for all the stripping he's been doing around here hey portugal wants to join our customs union 
hell to the yeah, bros. Honestly, it pains me to say this, but aside from the journal entries, there's no actual benefit to having puppets. If you can just own these lands directly, it's obviously a thousand times better to own it directly. That's why I'm basically integrating all of my Canadian and Australian puppets right now, because I have no benefit from keeping them as puppets. And if I do keep them as puppets and I do the journal entry with the Confederate this and that, what's going to end up being is these countries are going to get bigger, harder to control as puppets, and they might even try to become an independent nation whilst if they're a part of me that's not gonna happen hey we got the uh, ripper apparently he was hiding in a brothel and he was asking people to call him eddie izzard for some reason that's so strange i have no idea why that happened also if you know who eddie izzard is you should check out his uh, comedy he is one of my personal favorite comedians and a really cool guy if if we can call him guy i guess did the uh, tasmanians just fight us right now holy snaps the tasmanians have more bowls than everybody else unified in Australia, they decided to fight against us instead of getting integrated with the one battalion that they have. My respect for Tasmanian people just went through the roof right there. I've also integrated South Africa because I could and because this way it's going to be easier for me to just uh, raffle stomp the rest of the uh, Boer nations here like uh, Transvaal, Orange and uh, Zulu. I guess Zulu is not really a Boer nation though, is it? Transvaal gave up without a fight. However, Orange and Zulu, I need to keep on decreasing relations before I can actually attack them. So we'll come back to that region later. We've managed to basically integrate everything that we could integrate and that we care about. So now we're mainly going to be focusing on increasing our economy, making the British Isles the strongest area in the world, economically speaking. If we go over to cultures, we have 14 million Englishmen followed by 2 million Scots and 7 million Irish, which apparently is a discriminated culture in uh, Great Britain. That's very sad. And uh, what I'm going to do to make up for that is I'm going to build a lot of farms in uh, Ireland. I'm going to make Ireland my main farming area because there's so much population here and it's just basically a no-brainer right there. It's, it's one of those things that will not backfire on us ever and uh, just having a lot of farms here and nothing else is gonna be the right play i mean what could go wrong right this will improve our overall standard of living as well around the country making food a little bit cheaper for everybody and uh, at the same time increasing our gdp obviously and you know what i don't mind building some lead mines too since i'm at it i guess it's not only farms is it i think it's also time for a third expansion of our construction sectors let's go say another 15 in uh, the midlands this time and it appears like portugal wants to renew that old alliance in case you guys didn't know the english and the portuguese have the oldest continuous alliance set in recent years at least that we know of in written history that is and it looks like another big bold nation is trying to attack us the iron confederacy i guess you could say they've got iron bowls don't they sadly they have irregular units whilst we have skirmishers so we're obviously just you know we're we're killing them i have to be honest i kind of like these borders a little bit more than the actual borders between uh, the Americans and the Brits. It looks like a little bit more natural, doesn't it, compared to the uh, straight lines that we're used to. Dye plantations and sugar plantations are super vital for our economy. I've actually queued up a ton of both of these in my colonies. I cannot obviously build them in the British Isles because there's no actual sun in these lands, but um, of course, we just started this session and the Prussians are at war with the Russians. Why does that not even surprise me anymore? Holy snaps, the Ottomans are getting their asses handed to them by the Egyptians half of the Ottoman Empire is already occupied by Egypt let me check what the war goal for this war is looks like the Ottomans want to take their provinces back and the Egyptians want Cyprus treaty port war reps and Ottoman market open that would destroy the Ottomans if they open up their market it would be beneficial for the rest of us looks to me like both Orange and Zulu are fighting hand in hand like brother nations super ironic that you know Orange and Zulu are fighting against me together but hey that's just how the game works all right real life has nothing to do with this game end of the day also did you guys notice how good the freaking map is like holy snaps dude if you zoom in you actually see proper rivers the water even some of the rocks inside the let me check something hold on a second i want to see what the uh, british isles looks like up close oh that is so cool 
Like, it really looks a little bit like London, doesn't it? Take note, I've got no clue what London actually looks like, so I'm just assuming, because I see a river, the river Thames, going through the middle of it. That's, that's the only thing I have to go with. What's missing from this picture, though, is the huge amounts of uh, mines that the British had throughout the 19th century, where they were extracting coal and everything, right? It's where the Industrial Revolution started. Britannia, Britannia rules Africa. Never forget to change the production methods right after you've annexed something. I'm not not going for nitroglycerin because of the mortality rate i am actually researching dynamite so we're gonna switch on over to dynamite directly once we uh have it we don't need to worry about uh releasing some of our pops we still have a ton of population in the british isles for now that we can use for work oh we can build big ben holy schnapple dupe let's uh prioritize that bad boy make him get on the top of the queue there you go. Big Ben's gonna give us 50 prestige and 1% throughput. That is a huge amount of throughput, man. That's like, you know, more than 0.5%. Since I love my Irish people, I'm also gonna be building some glassworks in Ireland. I'm gonna make it the farm slash glassworks slash lead mine of my country. And let's also quickly fix our infrastructure problems here. Oh, would you look at that, my boys? North German Konfederationski is here. Sadly, they didn't take all of these small insignificant german states but at least they did unify half of germany let's say time for the next expansion phase this time i've queued up an extra 50 coal and 50 iron mines all around the empire that means i've queued these bad boys up in australia and canada areas where it's possible to queue them up because the british isles are pretty much out of population at this point the only area that still has population is the irish lands which by the way i started incorporating take note they are not incorporated from the start of the campaign so it's your choice when you want to start doing that I personally waited until they reached about 2 million on average for each of these states because remember unincorporated states get a hundred percent migration attraction so once you incorporate them they're not getting that migration attraction so you know it's like a double-edged sword you gotta choose when to integrate for more infrastructure right now the biggest issue I have is obviously the infrastructure so that's why I'm integrating also I'm getting double the conscripted battalions from these areas once I go to war so there's a ton of reasons why you should be doing it of course we've also overtaken the Qing as the greatest country when it comes to GDP and France is coming in third and they're coming in strong as always they focused on the African areas and they're getting a lot of GDP from there I did manage to block them from the Kenyan parts but I didn't succeed so in the uh, Saharan areas we've secured a landing zone in the Makran now we're gonna be pushing in because we're at war with Persia and Afghanistan the war goal is to take parts of Persia and to puppet Afghanistan since we need the opium from these lands so we're gonna switch over to steel frame buildings it will decrease our current financial situation we went from plus 280 to minus 26,000. but that's a-okay we're gonna fix this up once we build more steel mills as well as more glass workshops or whatever the schnapps they're called and we do have 43 million pounds in reserves so we don't need to worry about getting our economy destroyed because of that just yet looks like once more munster and ulster are are gonna be our primary lands to be building this in i'm gonna say uh 50 60 let's say glass works in here and let's do 60 steel mills in ulster them irish lands are definitely vital for the uh, industry of our entire empire so they did go from an agricultural spot to pretty much everything that we need them to be right now imagine actually thinking you're gonna be able to survive against me they got still irregular units against my skirmisher boyos the problem is that honestly is so much infamiarity and I still need to get a little bit more infamy because I still want to expand in Asia. My next target is going to be uh, Qing. I want to secure a few treaty ports from Qing whilst I'm at it. Our economy also just bounced back up after that massive dip we took once we switched the uh, construction method. And we just got Makran. Let's see if we can get the lands from the Persians next as well as Puppet Afghanistan. Surprised to see that the war between the Turks and the Egyptians is not over. How long have these guys been at war for? Or is this just a completely new- No, it's the same war! What? Holy snaps, how do they not enforce on each other already? Alright, I think we just got the provinces from the Persians. Yes, we did. Look at that beautiful little Great Britain in the south here. Don't you just feel proud to be British when you see this stuff? You're- you are British, right? If you're not British and you're watching this, then I should probably tell you that I've sent an Irish gang after you. The only way you can stop them from actually achieving what I asked 
them to do is to subscribe right now. You have roughly around 20 minutes to do it. If you don't do it before that, I'm not gonna call them off. I'm telling you now, this is the final chance, all right? Just, just smash the button. Despite my best efforts to avoid conflict in this area, <laughs> I have another conflict in this area very shortly after the previous one. I promise this will be the last war here for a while afterwards. I've actually ignored this area for a really long time. I feel like that might have been a mistake since it gave the Chinese time to modernize their army. So now I'm not so sure what exactly their army is going to look like, to be fair. Our boys are going through the Persian units as a knife would go through butter. Look at that. Three of our battalions just wiped out 10 of the enemy battalions because they're mostly irregular units still. Starting to look a lot better in the Middle East with Kalat a part of our country now. I should have taken Sind also. I just didn't have enough uh, maneuvers in that particular war. And the more keen of you will have noticed we are surveying for a skyscraper site which is likely going to be our capital since we have a lot of government and administration buildings there already. There you go. We got the lands from the uh, Persians. Now we can start with our very own opium plantations. Let's say uh, max out all of these bad boys. Can we get the population to max them out? Probably not. Oh, hello there. <laughs> the US is fighting to return. Oh no, they want to take all of the Mexican lands and the Mexicans want to get Texas back as well as open the American market. So clearly I'm going to support my boys, the Mexicans here. Let's go ahead with that. Let's also mobilize and go by the border with the Americans now. Isn't it glorious seeing the Mexicans absolutely raffle stomp across the United States? And what do you know? We identified our capital as a great center for a skyscraper as I was expecting. I also saw someone asking why are you building infrastructure in every single province considering the fact that it doesn't matter infrastructure is taken as a whole across the country. Well that's because I am building uniformly in every single province a lot of factories a lot of manufacturers plantations and so on and eventually i am going to be losing out on the market access so i'm essentially preemptively building infrastructure in every province so that i don't need to worry about market access later down the line not because i need care about the tickets don't give a schnapps about the tickets what i care about is the market access i want to make the switch to electric street lights but i only have 31 power plants Plants and I need more so I'm gonna build an extra 50 power plants all around the British Isles in preparation for all the electricity that we're gonna need around the country to switch to a full electric network both for production as well as for the streetlights holy mother of god this war cost the Americans 41 million pounds that is insane dude and they lost 80 oh they actually didn't lose that many troops though only 84,000 dead that's really acceptable considering the Mexicans lost way more than that now guys this right here in my opinion is one of the strongest if not the actual strongest technology and you should try and go for this as soon as you can shift work gives an extra 20 economy of scale building level cap which means you essentially get 20 percent more of every single good as long as you have the available factories for that economy of scale so what that means for example is if you have say i don't know 50 tooling workshops you're gonna get plus 50 50 throughput here that means 50% more goods produced than you otherwise would be getting because of that economy of scale. That's also why you really should prioritize having as much of one particular building in a province and looks like Mexico and the US made a, a peace deal which is quite interesting. USA gives back Texas and opens the American market but Mexico also gives Utah. So that's cool to see that you can get a little bit on both sides so there wasn't really any loser the US <laughs> but uh yeah it was basically a compromise that both sides made albeit considering Mexico enforced all of their demands I'd say the US lost that war holy mother of god London just went up to almost 5 million population that is insane dude this is in 1868 after all and we are the migration target of the Bosnian people okay the construction of the London skyscraper is complete dominating the skyline it inspires all who gaze upon it let's uh give it a proper name let's name it the uh, trump tower <laughs> I'll shut up now. <laughs> We've got a pretty sizable rebellion in the Indian lands. This doesn't surprise me. India is always very rebellious and hard to keep in check. So uh, hopefully we win this. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty tough getting India back afterwards. Oh, uh, 
Okay, they just gave up, fair enough. That was the fastest rebellion the Indians ever had. About time we also restricted child labor. This is really bad for us. We're getting 5% mortality, but pretty much every strata that we have because of child labor, that's gonna reduce the mortality rate to plus 2%. Eventually, once we get compulsory primary school, we lose 5% overall mortality rate, which is huge. Hello, China, the English are calling. We want our treaty port, thank you very much. That's uh, that's the English anthem in the 19th century in case you didn't know about it and oh great We got uh, down to 3% success chance on uh, restrict child labor. Let's uh, cancel that <laughs> Try and come back to that later. Let's go for another legislation. Oh, public health insurance would be amazing, actually. Let's try and go for this. And I highlight try. <laughs> 30 brave British battalions are quite literally kicking the ass of the uh, Chinese ones. Dude, I swear, every single time I say that, I lose a battle. I'm not gonna say that anymore. I literally just lost a battle after saying that. Come on. <laughs> All right, come on, we gotta win this one, please. Win it for Papa Ludi. Let's go. Three battalions against eight Chinese ones, and we're crushing them, boys. Interesting how in this game, I've lost a few battles, but I'm still winning the war. I brought them down to 26 war support from 100. All right, and we're back to winning battles. Let's go. That was just a minor fluke. We lost two battles. Don't think about it too much. I wish I knew how this game actually works when it comes to combat system, because end of the day, I don't understand how my units, despite being you know a lot fewer of them are winning against a superior foe here they got 420 battalions i get the tech makes a big difference explain to me why 25 of my units went into combat against what it was like 18 initially of the ching units that just doesn't make sense to me considering they have 420,000, why would only 18 of ching's units go into battle then right and i know i shouldn't be complaining when i'm winning these wars okay that was pretty okay i should not say anything anymore literally as i said that i just had a battle of 120 Ching against 20 of mine. So obviously I'm gonna lose that. Come on game, come on. It's listening to me, I'm telling you, it's listening to me. Minus 77 on Ching side, let's go. Come on, lose the war please. Ah yes, the great Shanzu Treaty Port, yeah? All right, this place is, uh, oh my God, 300,000 from that one little province? Jesus, schnipples known. And eh, that's a lot of shortages too. Let's uh, make sure this port actually has access to the rest of the world by building a port here first cue that up because right now this has zero access to the British market which means it cannot fulfill all of these shortages that it has until it actually can access the market oh wait what is this actually Hong Kong I swear I did not directly want to go for Hong Kong it just happened I really didn't even know where Hong Kong is I promise oh this is such a coincidence I'm just kidding I fucking planned this bitch you think everything happens randomly there's a reason okay don't trust videos on YouTube come on grow up Oh, I just saw this, guys. We went up to 20.5 standard of living. We got the world's first standard of living, followed by those scumbags in Norway. You sons of bitches. You're trying to take my first spot, aren't you, Norway? I'm sorry, what? The Americans are actually attacking a moi for the state of Utah and to ban slavery in Adwa. Ban slavery in my land. How about we ban slavery in your land, mother schnapper? Not gonna pretend like I actually know the name of all of these states, so um, I'm just gonna add this. This up. Oh, I just realized they actually declared on me for this small little province. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like this is justice enough uh, for the fact that they simply decided to attack me. I'm gonna basically destroy the United States after this war. If we win, of course, which we will. Are you kidding me right now? Germany joined last moment. I don't even have any more diplo maneuvers, so I cannot do any harm to the Germans. But that's gonna be really annoying because they're bringing in 500 units. That's a huge amount of soldiers, dude. My strategy right now is I'll wait for the Germans to come fight in the New World. And when they have all their units in the New World, I'm just gonna do a naval invasion and attack him in Germany directly. We're also quickly grabbing all of the American colonies in Africa and boy do they have a lot. I actually thought this was France but half of this was actually the US that they colonized Africa. I guess they're trying to cut out the middleman aren't they? We're also winning in the new world so we're fairly good. They got quite a little bit of defense. Holy snaps this is gonna be a challenge isn't it? Definitely gonna be a challenge but a welcomed one nevertheless. Crikey Edward we just cracked through the defenses of the Dixie my boy. 
boy. That's like the best American accent you're ever going to hear. Yeah, we managed to do a successful landing here. And we're pushing from these sides as well. We also got the war target. So we're getting passive war score because we got the war target. Meaning we're basically going to enforce on them in just a few months from now. And that's right. I'm building all of them tea plantations around Baluchistan and the Indian lands. Because I can. And because tea is the central focus of our tea empire. Hot diggity dong. We got our war goal enforced noise. Look at that juicy great British land here. <laughs> Small little America. Remember American people, this is just a game. No need to come after me with guns. I love you all. This is actually a great deal for us because South Dakota has got close to a million population for some reason. And all of the lands that we took here are insanely good population wise and GDP wise. The Americans for some reason decided to build mostly in North and South Dakota. I don't know why. 3 million GDP from the North. No GDP from the South. Wow. They got so much population here and they didn't build nothing. Okay, that is just weird. Oh, but check it out. We got 32 coal mines we can build as well as 8 gold mines. Come on, why they didn't build nothing here? Let's go ahead and get another 100 tea plantations on our colonies going. Well, probably not 100 because we don't have the population for that really. Jesus, I'm still struggling with my population? Really? And boys, we have reached trench infantry quite a while early on. I didn't even rush this or anything. This will be of massive help in future warfare. Let's also get the uh, field hospitals. All of this will tank our economy slightly, but it's going to go right back up after we acquire all of these goods. You know, I actually forgot to check if there's any achievements that the British have. Go possible. We're not amused as the British expel French diplomats whilst having cordial or better relations and as Great Britain have an anarchist form of government. Yeah, I don't want to have an anarchist form of government. Not in this campaign because I'm actually having a lot of fun here, but I don't mind doing that to the French. I'm already improving relations with them as it is because uh, I plan on using them for some more unique activities in the future. Holy mother of God, proportional taxation is going to give me half a million in currency extra? What? That is a lot of money, dude. Oh no, the Salish people have become addicted to opium. What have we done? <laughs> Meanwhile, the English have an obsession with tea and wine, so everything is good in uh, the land of tea, that's for sure. I don't really want to skip too much information because there's so much to talk about, especially when you're playing as the British. That's why I want to do a second part for this if we get, say, five, 6,000 likes within the first few days. So I know that there's actually interest in this run. And in the second part, I'm going to show you guys how to manage the late game part. Plus, I will attempt to do a world conquest as the British since it is the easiest in my opinion. Not guaranteed, but we can because we don't have that much infamy right now. We only have 38. So until the next time, check out this amazing Ottoman run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.